All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to take a look at how you can examine the spectral purity of a Balfang ham radio. In order to do this, you're going to need a couple of different things. You're going to need some attenuators, and we're going to show how you can use these and measure these. I'm going to use a Nano VNA, and then finally, I'm going to use my latest or newest toy, a Tiny SA Spectrum Analyzer. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned and check it out. Okay, so here is a page from Wikipedia that I will link in the description. And the reason I wanted to pull this up is because it gives a little bit more info and probably a better description than I can provide myself. It says an attenuator is an electronic device that reduces the power of a signal without appreciably distorting its waveform. An attenuator is effectively the opposite of an amplifier, though the two work by different methods. While an amplifier provides gain, an attenuator provides loss or gain less than one. Also down here, it says, fixed attenuators and circuits are used to lower voltage, dissipate power, or improve impedance matching. In measuring signal, attenuator pads or adapters are used to lower the amplitude of a known signal. I'm sorry, of a signal known amount to enable measurements or to protect the measuring device from signal levels that might damage it. Attenuators are also used to match impedance by lowering apparent SWR. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use these attenuators so we can test a Balfang's output on the Tiny SA without damaging the Tiny SA. So here's a closer look at the attenuators that we're going to be used in today's test. These are very small inline attenuators, and this one is 30 dB and it's rated for 2 watts. That means I don't want to pump more than 2 watts through this attenuator, or I could have a problem. This one is another 2 watt attenuator, and this is good for negative 15 dB. Both of these will reduce or, or attenuate my signal by 15 and 30 dB. Now this is the big boy. This one is good for up to 10 watts. It's good for DC to 300, I'm sorry, 3 gigahertz, and it does 40 dB of attenuation. All right, folks, so what we have here is a fully calibrated nano VNA, and I am doing a through test. Let me switch over to another screen. I'm hooked to the computer, and then here you can see Nano VNA Saver. And you can see that there is a zero dB loss. That's the red line that goes across our S21 gain chart. We are going to insert the attenuators in line to see what the effects are and to measure the effectiveness of the attenuators themselves. The first one we're going to use is this 15 dB attenuator. So let me go ahead and take these, I don't know what you call them, rubber protection devices off. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to insert it here. Okay, we're back in NOVNA Saver and I am going to perform a sweep. And you can see that our gain has dropped about 15 dB. Clear across the board. And that's exactly what we want. Let's take another look at the Nano VNA. Okay, now we're going to switch this one out for the 30 dB attenuator. We're back in Nano VNA Saver, and we are going to go ahead and we're going to run the sweep again. And you can see it dropped again. Now this is telling us at this particular marker, it's 29.1 dB. In a surprise twist of events, we are going to now test this attenuator, which is a 40 dB attenuator. This one is good for 10 watts. The other two are good for up to two watts. Now we're back at Nano VNA Saver and we're going to run the sweep again. And this is telling us it's a 39 dB. 
So it's a little bit off. I don't know if it's the test leads. I'm not sure what the problem is. This is not NIST calibrated equipment by any stretch of the imagination, but this is going to be close enough for us to do our test with the Balfang radio and the tiny SA. Okay, so let's get ready for our test. In this test, we're going to use this Balfang GT5R, which is supposed to be a spectrally pure Balfang radio. It's a newer model that's been released. Okay, so here's everything connected. I did accidentally have this connected to the high input and I wanted to connect it to the low input. We have the Balfang powered up on low power mode going through the attenuator and into the tiny SA. So let's just do a quick key up. And then there you can see the signal. That's the fundamental frequency in that peak. I don't see any other spikes. Part of the reason I might not see the other spikes is the settings on this tiny SA. They might not be granular enough to pick up any harmonics or other uh, spurious emissions, but we're going to do some more testing. Okay, we have the Tiny SA hooked up via USB to my computer, my desktop computer, and we are running the Tiny SA app. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to key up the Balfang again, and there you can see my signal, and then you can also see an adjacent signal. It looks to be around 294 megahertz. And that would be the second harmonic. Okay, that's the end of the test for this video. What I wanted to do is just make sure I had the capability to examine the spectral purity of this Balfang radio. And I was able to figure that out. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.